Hello Euclid. What you just saw there were the first five calibrated images of ESA's Euclid Space Telescope, transitioning from observations taken from DSS-2, so ground-based data, it's quite a neat trick on ESA Sky. Aren't those images just beautiful? Hey Space Cats, I'm Dr Maggie Liu and in this week's video let's take a look at Euclid's first calibrated images in detail. Euclid's images demonstrate the vastness and complexity of the universe. There's still so much that we don't know about the cosmos, but by understanding science, we can better appreciate its beauty and wonder. This is why I'm thrilled for Brilliant.org for sponsoring this week's video. Brilliant is the best way to learn science interactively. One of the things that I love most about Brilliant.org is that it teaches complex concepts like math, data science and computer science in a way that's both engaging and effective. Their course on astrophysics delves into topics like cosmology and the mysterious dark energy. These are the main enigmas that the Euclid Space Telescope aims to investigate. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org forward slash spacemark or click on the link in the description box below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So back to the images. Now usually you wouldn't be seeing a colour image because in astronomy we typically work with single band images like a red only, green only or blue only image. But by combining the images of both instruments, VIS and NISP, recall the VIS instrument takes images in optical and the NISP instrument takes images and spectra in infrared. By first aligning these two instruments' images and then assigning the shorter wavelength observation, the optical, to the blue light and the longer wavelength observations, the two near infrared images, Y and H bands, to the red and green light, we get a full color image. Perseus is, of course, my favourite of the bunch, being a massive galaxy cluster. You can see not only the thousands of galaxies in the gravitationally bound structure, but also the hundreds of thousands more behind the galaxy cluster, many more than what's being seen from the ground. Many of these objects had appeared as a single galaxy before, and it turned out they were two or even more galaxies. This is an effect known as deep blending, and astronomers have been working hard to do this effectively, but it's hard to do so if you don't have the resolution. And this is particularly the case when you're observing from the Earth, where you have to see through the entire atmosphere. Euclid has amazingly sharp vision from space. Surprisingly, you can still see the ghosts in the image, which I spoke about in my previous Euclid video. The ghosts are these fuzzy blue blobs. They're caused by reflections of light, either from within or outside of the telescope, from, for example, stray light entering the telescope. You know it's only in the optical data because it's blue. These things are impossible to completely remove, but I'm surprised to see so much of it. I had a very careful look for signs of strong lens galaxies, but there wasn't anything obvious to me. I did find this nice question mark pair of galaxies though. In any case, there's no question about it, the hundreds of thousands of background galaxies here will be weak gravitationally lensed by this massive galaxy cluster. Their light will be distorted by the gravitational influence of the cluster. By such a tiny amount, we can't see it by eye, but instead need to do statistical analysis to infer it. We can also see several dwarf galaxies, galaxies with just a few billion stars compared to the hundreds of billions in our own galaxy, the Milky Way. The globular cluster NGC 6397 is a spherical collection of over 500,000 stars tightly bound together by gravity. 
Globular clusters are some of the oldest objects in the universe, containing a wealth of clues about the history and evolution of their host galaxies, like in this case our own galaxy, the Milky Way. But this one is one of the oldest known globular clusters, with an estimated age of about 13.5 4 billion years. This makes it nearly as old as the universe itself, which is estimated to be around 13.8 billion years old. Here, blue stars are younger and red stars are older. Due to its brightness and relatively close distance, NGC 6397 is a popular target for both amateur and professional astronomers, and it can be observed even with a small telescope. The stars, which are super bright in this image, so many of them have diffraction spikes caused by the interaction of light with the edges of the telescope aperture and its support struts. But also notice that some of them are rainbow colored. This is a phenomenon known as wavelength dispersion, and it's due to the different wavelengths of light being refracted at different angles. It's kind of like how a prism breaks white light into a spectrum of colors. By the way, these spikes only start exhibiting a rainbow effect when you're perfectly focused. So great job, Euclid telescope operators. The irregular galaxy NGC 6822 is an irregular galaxy, so not your usual elliptical or spiral shaped galaxy. It's a small galaxy containing only a few billion stars, but you can see several patches of pink bubbles spread all over the galaxy. These are star forming regions where new stars are being born. We can also see the presence of a number of dust lanes, which are regions of dense gas and dust. By studying irregular galaxies such as NGC 6822, we get to learn more about the early stages of galaxy formation. Spiral galaxies are galaxies that have a spiral shaped structure. IC 342 is one of the largest spiral galaxies in our vicinity, but it's actually really difficult to see it because it's hidden behind the dust, gas and stars of our Milky Way disk. The Euclid image of IC 342 shows the galaxy in great detail, revealing the prominent spiral arms wrapped in tendrils of dust lanes. These consist mostly of tiny solid particles like silicates and carbon-based compounds that absorb and scatter light, especially at shorter wavelengths which makes the dust lanes appear dark. There's also a H2 nucleus with a high density of stars and the presence of significant amounts of ionized hydrogen gas, meaning it's an active star-forming region. This is likely to harbour a supermassive black hole. And finally, the stunning Horsehead Nebula. It's a dark nebula located in the constellation Orion. It's essentially a cloud of gas and dust that's so dense that it blocks out the light from the stars behind it. The Horsehead Nebula is one of the most iconic nebulae in the sky. It's been photographed countless of times, but Euclid has been able to capture the stunning detail in under an hour of observation. This is a stellar nursery where star formation is actively happening. The nebula itself is mostly made up of cold molecular hydrogen, which gives off very little heat or light. Here you can see filaments of gas and dust that are being sculpted by the wind from nearby stars. You can still see the ghosts, which appear more white here, and other camera artifacts. But these shouldn't affect the ability for the science here, which is looking for Jupiter mass-like planets and baby stars hidden behind the clouds. Overall, all I can say is Euclid's first images are stunning. It's a testament to the power of this new telescope. The images provide unprecedented detail of the cosmos. I hope you're as excited as I am about the future of the Euclid mission and for more images to come. And definitely check out ESA Sky to make it easy to see all of these images in one place and zoom in and out of them. That's all for this week's video. Thank you for my YouTube Perks members for supporting. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.